Welcome back, this is Jason Seacar. So we are going to go through the coloring portion of our elephant today. And at the end of the last video, we basically did all of the eraser, cleaned up all of our nice little edges. Now what I would do is if you want to keep everything the same color for the strokes, this would be a good time to just grab all of your lines, come over to Pathfinder, and then unite them. So all of your lines and then just come on over and unite them so they are all together. If you were going to color anything separately, this you might want to just kind of hold off on that, but uh, for the most part, I like to do the uniting the lines before we do our, our live paint bucket. All right, so let's build our swatches. I am just gonna pull that on over. Now, if you said, hey, I just wanna do the grays all the way to the blacks, not an awful idea. I'm gonna do a little bit of a greenish and actually let's move it over to a, I would rather do a little bluish to be honest with you now what I'm gonna do is go right along this line where it's a little bit more grayed out so I'm gonna say okay with that one and what we're looking to do is pretty much build up a full value range so just notice I'm gonna start move up a little bit until I can see a difference good double click so this will be fairly monochromatic. Double click. And if it's coloring the lines because it's still selected, that's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. So this is going to be our highlights, our shadows, base colors, things like that. So the more you have, just the more full range you have in your gradients. Almost to white there. And then we'll stop it there. Good. Let's just click on our dark and then deselect. So what we are going to then do, we are going to grab everything. Let's go to live paint, make. Now all we're going to do is click on K. And I'm going to say, let's just start here. And all we are looking to do for the f first part is I just want to fill in elephant. Let's come back to our lights. And let's just fill everything in. Highlights included. So I just want to make sure everything's filled first. Now we can have some fun. So things could be a little bit separated. Let's just say on this side, that'll be pretty dark. Everything else will probably have to cut out. I might say over here could be pretty dark too. All right, I say good. Now, whenever you're doing the live paint bucket, just be aware that it's also creating shapes so we can color and modify those shapes later. So even if you say, hey, I just want it to be white, my recommendation is to still color them white and then you can always modify them later. So next little thing we're gonna do is ungroup. Usually the magic number is three for some reason. And what we are able looking to do, maybe we have to do it again, is we want to be able to just grab individual shapes. So as soon as we can do that again, then you are good to go. So I'm gonna file save. What we also wanna do is let's call that one flat color. I am then going to duplicate flat color now, if I wanted to change anything right now, this might not be a bad idea to say, hey, I want some things to be lighter, darker. So let's just say, you know, this one will get a little bit one step up. Maybe this one will be one step up. Okay. So at that point, now we can come over and this will be our shadow layer. And I do want to make sure I save the flat color, by the way because that is gonna be our gradient later. So when we do our gradients, we want that going over the full colors. And more than likely, we'll add that to the bottom as well. So just so you can kind of see where we're going with it. All right, decisions, decisions. Now I would say that it's gonna be, let's say it's almost coming down at a pretty directly down angle. So that would be our light source which is why the left-hand side of the face is going to be a little bit darker. 
So we have two options for our shadows. So let's do one version first, and then we'll come back and do a little bit of the, the fancier one. I think we'll do the line with our pen tool in the shift C, just because there's a lot of curves happening. So version one is I can select the shape. We do have under the eraser tool, a nice little knife tool. And then all I need to do is go all the way through the shapes. And then I can come in and say, hey, I want to color those one step up. So a lot of the times with it being a little bit more freeform, I would suggest having smaller line segments. So if I say, there's one, there's one, let's bring that one up. So it is just a little bit sloppier. So if you guys like that, I think it's quite easy to use. But if you say, hey, I want it to be a little bit more of a professional um, line or a stroke, let's go through the other version. I'll leave this ear one over here, by the way. So let's just look at our light source. Everything's going to be coming down. So let's just zoom in on the face. Again, we're on our shadow layer. Let's get rid of swatches. All right, so I'm just going to do line. And then we're going to come back with shift C. The answer is 100% yes if you wanted to use the pen tool for this. So there's one. Let's do the other one just so you can kind of see where we're going with this. And let's, I'm going to say all the way by the tusk. Shift C. I will tuck that one up. We already have the other one, which you can't see. Notice there is no fill on this, by the way. No fill, no fill. Okay, so I've got black arrow. All right. So I want both my lines grabbed, and then I also want to grab face color. Now, whenever we're doing this, just kind of double check that things are overlapping. We're going to come over to Pathfinder. We're going to come down to Divide. Next, we are going to ungroup. So notice I'm also deselecting. So I should be able to just come over, grab my shapes, go one up with it. If I like that shape, next little thing I would do is unite what we just did so that is seen as one big shape. Good, this one looks like a pretty easy little short one. So let's do our knife tool with that. Just go one up with it. Let's do the same thing over here. So let's just say the eye brow is going to cast a nice little cast shadow. So I'm going to divide, ungroup, go one up with it. Okay, let's say I'm going to do pen tool for this one that there's going to be a little cast shadow under that cheek. All right, let's keep it going. Now I say there's gonna be a big, there's gonna be all sorts of different values hanging out under here. So there's gonna be a value under the tusk going down. I will also say there's gonna be a big cast shadow kind of on this side of the body. So let's do pen tool for that. And I will come back and modify these by the way. Let's let's just do that one first. Now let's just do an easy one straight down. This will be the trunk. Grab that, divide, ungroup. All right, let's do a little bit of our trunk here. Now I'm gonna go one, and then we'll go straight down. Let's just go right over here. I'm gonna hold down shift, by the way. Shift C. Just 
Just double check whenever you guys are doing this that there is no fill. Good. Click on divide. Ungroup. All right. I'd say we are getting pretty close. All I want to do, I'm going to grab these. And we're just going to do a nice little curve. Grab this one. And this is, again, the knife tool. Nice little curve. Good. I'm going to file save. Now, I say four shadows. In the final, you might see me do a little bit more here and there. But I say for, for right now, I say that is probably okay for shadow layer. So what we're going to do is lock that guy out. What I'm going to do is take our flat color layer. I'm going to duplicate it. It will look like everything just went away. That is okay. I'm going to say gradients for this one. We're going to unlock it. Now what we are looking to do is I would probably say, let's just see how picky this is going to be. I say that looks good. So I want it to pretty much go over the entire elephant. So I'm going to grab all of the gray. Let's just come over to the top here. I'm going to go object, compound path. We can make... Now, really your choice if you want linear or radial. Let's just try radial and see how uh, how we like it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is I would go... Let's go really, really light with it. And then let's try our darkest color. Now, I'm going to say... Let's start at 40% for both of these. Now, when the 40% comes in, you'll notice right away that the shadows will start popping back in. So, really your choice on how light and or how dark. So, if I say, hey, I want this to be brighter. And then, maybe when we do our darks, maybe that'll be 10%. So, that would be kind of step one. Now, what we are going to do is I'm going to come over to the left-hand side. We're going to click on the gradient tool. And since we said, hey, where is our light source? We want to drop the light source where we think it's going to go. Now, since this one's radial, this really shouldn't matter as in the, in the direction. Now, notice that we have a very, very see-through 10%. So the more I drag this out, you're going to notice that the closer it is to the light source, the more subtle those values are going to be. So totally up to you on if you, how big you want this to be. Or how small you want it to be. I say right there. I'm okay with that. Alright, good. Next, let's grab our light areas. I'm going to click on it again. It is going to add some different stuff to it. But I'm going to go... I say white. And then we can start playing around with how dark we want these to go. Now our white is at 70%, your choice if you want to keep it there. Now notice that these are all hanging out in the center. So each little white will have its own little, little guy. Your choice if you want to modify each one of these. Most of the time, you just kind of have to think of where is my light source coming from. And if you just move the middle kind of up in that direction, it'll actually probably play out the way you want it to. Now, if you didn't want to highlight in the uh, center of the eyes, then I would just change that. Let's just move that up right there. Okay. Well, I am not too concerned with that. That looks okay. Let's do one other little layer. Let's get fancy today. So I want to take my gradient layer. I'm going to drop that guy down. Notice that they're all locked out, by the way. Now this one we're going to do highlights. So we're going to be building kind of our separate ones. Now when we do our gradients, it's going to be basically linear. And all we're going to be focusing on is kind of these top areas. So I might do the top of the trunk. Maybe we'll do top of the ear, top of the forehead. And I think we'll be pretty good with right... Just stopping those for the sake of the tutorial. Now I might go one, two, three, shift C. Now 
Now notice that the, the gradient is still selected, by the way. All right, so let's just zoom in so you guys don't yell at me. Uh, one. Let's just do it right away so you guys are seeing where we're going with it. So I want linear. And then this top part is going to be the part that's the most getting light. Now notice I don't have this connected. I will probably say I want to connect them so I can control the shape. I might have to come back over here. That's not a big deal. Now, right now, the highlight's hitting on this side. What we are then going to do is with our nice little tool, we're just going to... And this is totally just guess and check, by the way. And then we're going to shrink that guy up. Now, since we haven't really messed with it, so we want linear. This one is 0%. So the closer we are to that line, I want that white. And the idea is to basically mess with it until this one just kind of just goes away on you. So it's nice and subtle, little tiny bit, but I don't want to necessarily see where it connects to the forehead. It'll read out as a highlight a lot nicer if you don't have it connect like that. All right, let's do the ear. I'm going to go shift C down at the bottom just so we can round that out. Another little thing just to be aware of too is notice that we aren't going straight up to that edge. I want it to be pulled back a little bit. You can always kind of pull this and it's really just guess and check. What do I want? How far do I want this to be? Good. I say we do one for just the trunk here, and then we can call it a day. Now, if you want more than one, that would be totally your choice, and meaning if I want it to continue all the way down, you could totally do that. Meaning it would go all the way down to the bottom here. Now, this one, we're probably going to mess with it a tiny bit. And it might not hold true to where the light's coming from, but what we're not looking to do is have it light up over here. And I might not want it to, I'd rather it just be along this edge, to be honest with you. All right, guys, done and done. Save away. So if you guys are liking the channel, definitely subscribe, definitely share away. Uh, we've got a crazy amount of different cartoon tutorials on this channel. So if you guys are having questions as you're going through, definitely put a comment. Uh, I do read those and try and get back to you as soon as I can, especially since I know you're probably working on the tutorial. So I'm very, very quick about getting in. Uh, back in touch with you uh, next little thing is thank you for always staying positive since a lot of my students do read those comments so i do appreciate that uh greatly so other than that thanks for hanging out and i will see you guys on the next tutorial